Domestic water heaters traditionally run on electricity, natural gas, or oil, for which you have to pay and which have an environmental impact. A newer alternative is a solar energy system. It warms water with the heat of the sun, a resource that's not only renewable, but free of charge. Solar panels absorb the sun's energy, heating water, which a pump circulates in a closed loop, to a heat exchanger. The exchanger then transfers the incoming heat to the potable water in the household tank. Inside the solar panels are copper strips, electroplated with tin, which absorb the sun's heat. The copper surface must be pristine for the plating to adhere. Therefore, the first operation is a three-stage cleaning process. Tin doesn't adhere directly to copper, so they first electroplate with nickel, then plate the nickel with tin. The plating is brittle, so to protect it, the next station sprays on a thin coat of liquid glass. The strip then passes through an infrared oven, which hardens the glass into a durable protective shield. As the strip exits the oven, a fiber optic instrument measures reflectivity. The less reflective the surface, the better it absorbs heat. From there, the strip enters a welding machine, which fuses it to copper tubing entering from another feeder. A nozzle sprays cold water onto the mated components, still hot from the welding process. They're wound onto a giant reel. The reel feeds a forming machine, which uses heavy steel rollers to press ridges into the strip. This increases the surface area, meaning it compacts more heat-absorbing metal into a given length of strip. Next, the machine cuts this continuous fin tube, as it's now called, into the standard length pieces required to construct the solar panel's internal piping. Then, a piece at a time, it slices 19 millimeters off each end, so the tubing protrudes. Each solar panel contains 10 fin tubes, which connect on either side to a header. To make each header, workers slide a 2.5 centimeter wide copper tube onto a mandrel. Then they punch 10 holes in the tube, one for each fin tube. They fit the protruding ends of the fin tubes into these holes and weld the connections. The finished assembly is called an absorber plate. It's the key component of the solar panel. The fins absorb the sun's heat and warm the water circulating through the tubes down to the heat exchanger. They pressure test the absorber by submerging it in water and injecting air through the tubes. Any bubbles in the water would indicate a leak to be repaired. Now they cover the headers with a decorative trim and lay the manifold into the solar panel's insulated aluminum housing. The front is a sheet of tempered glass, which allows sunlight to reach the fins inside. After putting caps on the headers to protect them during transport, they apply the manufacturer's label. The solar panel is finished. Now for the other end of the system, the heat exchanger. Its tank is made of welded stainless steel. It has connections for the heat exchanger pipes running to and from the water heater, as well as for the pipes running the circulating water to and from the solar panels. Workers install the heat exchanger unit in the tank, then test it for leaks by filling the tank with water, injecting air through the pipes, and looking for bubbles. If the unit passes the leak test, they drain the water, close the top of the tank, and center it in an ABS plastic jacket. Then they inject expanding foam insulation into the void between the tank and jacket. How does it all work? The potable cold water in the home's water heater circulates through the loop inside the exchanger. It absorbs the heat brought in from the solar panels via a completely separate set of pipes. The potable hot water then exits the exchanger and returns to the water tank. <laughs>